In this video, I'll be talking about the big picture of the letter of 2 Corinthians. Just as the last several letters have been, the author of this letter was Paul, and this is again another letter written to the church at Corinth. So if you remember, we just finished covering 1 Corinthians, so now Paul is sending a second letter to the church at Corinth. And just a little bit of background information about the, the city of Corinth. This was one of the wealthiest cities of Greece. Um, so it was a major hub for uh, lots of trades and lots of industries. And not only that, Corinth had a reputation for immorality and vice. So when you're thinking of Corinth, think of a place such as Vegas. Uh, so this is kind of the immediate uh, context that Paul is writing within. He's trying to um, witness and build up this church that is probably uh, very much a, a light, a city set on a hill in terms of its surrounding culture. So then the date of the book is, or the letter, is around 56 AD. So not much time has passed between Paul's first letter, the first Corinthians, and now this letter. And just like first Corinthians, the there's a lot of historical context that's important to this letter as well. So after Paul sends the letter that we know as first Corinthians, he heard that the issues in the church still had not been resolved. And so Paul just decides that he's going to visit Corinth and lay these issues to rest. But unfortunately, the visit ended in a disaster where Paul was publicly humiliated and rejected because what had happened is false teachers had been kind of sneaking into the church and infiltrating the congregation. And uh, they, they did not like Paul. And so when Paul comes, they attacked his authority. So then after the visit that ended badly, uh, Paul writes a letter to the church. And this is another letter we have that has been lost. So we do not know exactly what Paul wrote in this letter. But we know the result was that the majority of the church repented for their rebelliousness against Paul. So then we get to 2 Corinthians, this letter, and we see that Paul writes this letter to express joy in their repentance and encourage them in their faith. So, like I said, there's a whole lot going on here that you wouldn't know um, just by, you know, opening your Bible. So I think that this context can be really illuminating as you are diving into this letter. The structure is pretty simple. So the first seven chapters is pretty much focused on Paul expressing joy in how the church repented. If you remember from 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul had a very close relationship with this church. He had founded the church and he had spent an extensive amount of time in the church um, getting close with them and ministering to them. And so it, uh, it, it makes sense that he would be so joyful after all the struggle that he had gone through in uh, going to visit them and being turned away and rejected. And so he's just expressing joy that the church has come back around to repentance. So then in chapters 8 and 9, he reminds the church to continue financially supporting Christians in other areas. So as I mentioned beforehand, uh, Corinth was a very wealthy city, and so uh, the the Christians had been financially supporting other Christians in different areas. And then finally, in chapters 10 through 13, Paul defends his authority as an apostle. So the false teachers, they attacked his, uh, his claim to authority, and they, uh, they did not want Paul to continue to be uh, ministering to that church. And so in this last part of this letter, Paul goes on to give reasons why he is trustworthy. So this letter provides a unique look into the life of Paul. 
the the false teachers attacked him on many levels they claimed he was fickle he was proud and boastful he was worldly he was unimpressive in appearance and speech uh, he was unstable in thought he was not a true apostle he was dishonest and so they had just come up with all of these things to basically slander Paul with. So then we see uh, how, you know, the end part, the last several chapters of 2 Corinthians, this is why Paul is defending himself because of how the false teachers had just slandered his authority. So while Romans shows the mind of the apostle and we saw his uh, kind of his theological framework for how he views the gospel. Second Corinthians is where we see more of the heart of the Apostle Paul. Uh, it's the most personal of all of his letters, and really it gives us a transparent look as what it, at what it means to be a servant and an ambassador of Jesus. So I imagine it would have been really easy for Paul, once being hurt and rejected, to kind of break ties with this church. But instead, we see him model the example of, uh, of being a servant and an ambassador that is forgiving and does not give up on the people here, but continues to come back to them and reconcile this relationship with them uh, to continue the spread of the gospel. So this kind of concludes just a flyby of 2 Corinthians. I think knowing this context will really help you get a lot more out of the book when you read it.